So we got something uh, interesting going on today. So I have um, one of my guys out disking on the field. It's about 45 minutes from here, uh, just right by the Oregon-California border. And the field's a little wet out there. And so we went out there, took the disc, and I did a couple laps. And we drove around just trying to see where the wet spots are. And we found a couple, and we stayed out of them. But I told him, that was the one thing I told him, I said, just don't get stuck. Well, of course, I end up getting a video of just the tractor stuck, and he didn't say anything. So I got to figure out how to get him out because it's so far away. All my other tractors are being used. I'd have to get them on the low boy, unhook their implements, and it's this big, long trek back up in there. And it's just a pain to get over there. So I think it's time that uh, the M1070 gets its first use for probably a year. This thing just sits. We use it for silage or spreading uh, manure. But uh, it's that's the crazy thing about these things is every time I come over here, it doesn't matter if the tires are flat or just any problems, it just fixes itself. It's the ultimate, the ultimate farmer's vehicle. So the only problem with this thing is it doesn't fix uh basically worn out tires so hopefully the next model will but uh we'll have to make her work i only have to drive about 50 minutes an hour down the highway so it, it should work it should work those are uh the drive tires that's why they're so bald <laughs> uh, well i do have more tires for them I think I have some spares. I don't know if they're mounted, but it's kind of a pain to change these because it has the auto air on it and getting it jacked up enough where you can get the axles. Well, now that I got a crane, I probably would just lift it up from one side, just kind of teeter it, and that'd probably be the easiest way to do it. Right now, it's got a big silage bed on it. And then over here, we have a, sitting next to our corn header, we have um, a spreader, a back spreader, manure spreader that mounts on the back of this thing. So, yeah, she's a pretty big machine with silage sides up on top of it. This tire over here, this front tire is always flat. Yeah, our drive over here, other tires look a little bald too, but this tire right here is always flat it's not looking too good but like I said she just I don't know she usually just fixes herself sits for a year battery switches over here it's looking good I'm gonna check the oil looking good and these things are awesome I don't really know that much about them but uh, this one has uh, basically an 8b92 uh, Detroit in it it's like a silver 8b92 type silver but since it's been redone and rebuilt it's got modern electronic injectors in it out of a series 60 so I think this is probably one of the best motors ever made I mean not good for fuel efficiency but you get uh, the robustness of an 8B92 Detroit with modern fuel injectors that just purr. So it's a 500 horse, basically 8B92. So oil looks good. Um, hopefully there's not too many mice up in here, but this thing's actually super clean. It doesn't have very many hours on it. It was, it was rebuilt oh, right here. So... 2005 2005 and then let me hit the battery switch here <sighs> and I mean right now last night it was like 19 degrees out so we don't have anything helping us here we got batteries and Yeah, she might need a little bit of a jump. And I didn't know CarQuest makes this type of battery. 
but either way I think I found a it's in this left side battery bank it's got a lower cell it's probably one of these batteries pulling it down but it should work for today I'm gonna use my trusty Colorado that usually jump starts every single thing that is dead uh, no question never have a problem so I yeah I really don't think this is gonna be a problem for us First try. So like I said, this thing doesn't have very many hours on it. It's only got 1,748. So that's why it's, uh, I mean, it's actually pretty dirty right inside, but it's a very clean machine. Everything is very tight. The transmission, it's a five speed that has a lock up. I feel like in at least three gears, but maybe all of them. So, uh, it gets it pretty good and so this is the auto air system which is the best thing ever uh, it's been building some air now so we have almost 90 psi or maybe 80 but uh, I turned it off just because it's beeping at me but all I got to do is here turn this thing on it's gonna say low air but it's probably not gonna start till it gets over I think 100 psi which you can just let it do this and come back and it'll just be, that tire will be full and all the other tires will automatically be full. So I have it set on highway, so it'll fill it to highway PSI. So I don't really know like the actual legality of driving this down the road. Um, that's where farming comes in handy because I mean, as long as it's a farm vehicle, it doesn't really matter. You can just drive it down the road. Okay, so I got plenty of air over here. So all I gotta do is uh, turn on the air system, press start, and it's gonna start testing uh, tire pressures. And uh, yeah, see this tire is filling up as we speak. Like these things can flow some crazy amounts of air be able to fill that tire that quick this is all in real time so it just sent test uh, pressures to the other tires and they were good so it's basically sending all of the air there for the tire system trying to get her filled up just like that almost ready to go this thing's pretty incredibly tall because the back light is basically about my height so it's up there of course as everybody would expect uh, this truck's got to be number 69 so it's uh, basically the only way to go nowadays okay I think we're ready to party here The the tires aren't completely full it's still blinking at me but it's pretty close I'm gonna drive over to one of the shops and blow all the mouse turrets out of this thing. Okay, let's see if she moves. Oh yeah, air supply good. She's in the driving. No, she just drives like the sedan you would expect her to drive. The only bad part about it is I don't have any mirrors. Well, I have a mirror over there when you have the manure spreader on it'll somehow perfectly kick a rock or something straight back into your mirrors every time you you replace them These transmissions are really funny driving just they have such a hard lockup in each of the gears sounds like you got a eight speed you know but is we'll go over here I like driving this thing like a sports car you know so 
how you got a driver. My mile per hour gauge doesn't work. It's all right. When you have a full pin, she'll only do about 50. So I got Adrian he's blowing the cab out. It's full of dust. Mouse turd. So he's getting it blown out, and then he'll probably, I'll have him drive out there. Because he was running the tractor. And uh, let's hope we can get her pulled out. So I'm filling up with some diesel over here. I actually ended up shutting the thing off and I thought I'd be able to start it, but those batteries are pretty fried, those two. The other two are pretty good, so just a quick jump got us going, but uh, just filling up and then we'll be on our way. Okay, just cruising down the highway here. Like I said, I think it's about an hour drive over there, but going a nice 50. Okay, so this is where we're going to turn off and hit the other highway. Crazy thing about this thing is I like feel pretty comfortable letting like really anybody drive it that knows how to drive a car as long as you slow down a little bit for the corners, but I mean she just rallies too. I can't see if there's a train coming, but I'm trusting my instincts. Okay. There she goes. Ripping through gears. Like that, you're going 50. Real nice day out. Oh, it's bumpy over here. Nice view of Mount Shasta. Okay, we're just pulling on a state line of the highway here. This side's Oregon, that side's California. And we'll basically drive this all the way till it ends, connects to 97. And then uh, we'll be pretty close. I was really thinking about it and I kind of wonder like I think this thing's better than a tractor like any tractor uh, pulling something out I guess unless you have like a big bud or a I don't know a big four-wheel drive with triples on each side I just this thing can get somewhere super quick and can lock up every single tire so I just feel like it's the ultimate pullout vehicle. I'd choose this over a tractor. But, I don't know, we'll see today. I don't think he's that stuck. But, it's just another test. You know, I, I pulled out the swapper last year. That was the last time I started this. About a year ago. Well, a little bit less than a year ago. And then, before that, it ran a year earlier. So, it only ran like maybe an hour for the past two years. Okay, we're just getting 97 right now uh, off of State Line. So I'll turn left here. It's basically just over this hill. But it's so bumpy, I won't be able to film really driving up there. But. So it's kind of cool. Entryway over top of the tracks. So this place up here is probably one of the coolest properties around. It's only about five minutes off of 97, but just feels like you're in your own little world. And yeah, really cool property all up in here. Two pivots, some wheel lines, and just a really neat place. So before I start driving over, I'm gonna just put this thing in uh, mud and sand here. All you do is flip it over it's gonna start dumping the air in the tires uh, so I can get some better uh, traction so it'll start dumping all those tires it said max speed of 15 miles an hour mud sand and snow then there's emergency which is five miles an hour so the M1070 is currently dumping the air in the tires I don't know what PSI it's gonna put it down but you can hear it dumping air but uh, Adrian's stuck right over here I mean, it's basically on the frame. Good thing it already has the rubber step 
Yeah. Somebody new? already got it stuck, and so they had to replace the normal one with the rubber. But yeah, I mean, it's it's in there, and I would have never guessed he would have got stuck where he's at right now. I mean, he's dueled up, but luckily it froze hard, so maybe I'll try to get in front of him up here and see what we can do. I mean, the, the disc tires are just buried, and there's water in the wheels. So I guess we'll pull around this other side. Just kind of watching, making sure my tires aren't sinking too much. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, I'm definitely sinking a little bit, but I think I'll have some pretty good traction. Maybe a bad tread on my tires, but once it's locked up, it does pretty good. So um, I actually got pretty close to it and I found this cable at the ranch right here, which looks like it's like a, maybe a one inch plus cable and it's just on the pin tool. And then we also found one of these like circular straps that's rated for uh, 40,000. So, you know, we're gonna give it a shot. Well, we might have to have a new plan here. We gave it two tries here, and this thing is stuck, stuck. I'm starting to dig some holes with the M1070. Wish I had a winch on this thing, like how it came. But I am starting to dig some holes. And this thing is very... I don't know if we've made any progress or not, but I just, I think we got to unhook the disc. I don't see another way to do it. It's right there. Just try spinning it. Huh? Like spin it. Try to walk it out of there. Well, go uh, move the front the one hydraulic and I'll, it'll, it'll wobble out. And I'll, I'll grab it. Okay. Is that chain hooked up down there? No, no, no. no. Chain, no. No, I am pretty blown away that that just pulled that thing out. I mean, that tractor, I think is 38,000 around that, maybe I'm guessing 40,000. And the disc, I mean, we had to unhook it to get it out, but the disc weighs 12, 15,000. But here's the hole from it, it's giant. Look at this thing. Huge hole. They're uh, probably, yeah, three feet deep. Now, just trying to get this thing out. So when we set it down, the roller is pushed all the way down right now. And basically it's as high as it can go. So we just have to get a hitch height that can hold that thing up. 
we actually just bent the pin and the shackle. That's an inch and three eighths shackle. So I say we pull pretty hard. Let's try to get the disc out of here now. So we ended up just being able to pull the disc backwards with the tractor and no problem. It just pulled right out of there. So we just pulled it on to dry ground and the tongue's way in the ground, but that's the good thing about these discs is you can just lift the tongue right up on the tractor. So you might have to get closer, huh Adrian? Yeah. Let's stop right there. That looks good. We'll give that a shot. Get the hydraulic lines hooked up. And... Man, which one's leaking so bad? I need to replace one of those barrels. That one. <laughs> Number five. We just might have to wait on this field. Should we wait and, I don't know. Need to get it done, but I'm probably just gonna find another sippy hole. It's supposed to possibly snow tomorrow, I guess. No, that one, that one, other way. Yeah. Just like that, pulling her out of the ground. Back one. Yep. There you go. Crank it hard right and back up. Back up. Back up. Okay, she's in the air. All right, we just gotta get the strap off over here and we're good to go. So that's a wrap. Adrian just promised me that he won't sink again. So we shouldn't have any more uh, problems. So I'm gonna head on back and call it a success.